Got to give a shout out, Laura Mulder checking in from home. She's doing well watching us online. Laura, we're glad you're doing all right as we turn them loose for the Modifieds. Oh, TP, a little high, wide, and handsome into entry into turn number one. Look at that, the local driver, Aaron Benson, in the 24, going to the early race lead with Gabe Hodges settling into second. Hodges trying to find his way around the top side as Benson has the bottom side working. We called it out, the sprint cars, putting down a good track for us here tonight at the Mesa City Motor Speedway. Everybody working multiple racing groups through, through the track right now. That's what I was just about to say. The, those sprint cars really widen this track out. They're, they're racing everywhere from the tires to the everywhere to the wall and in between. The race uh, current race leader is no slouch in that, ag, in that uh, Kruger seed. Car number 24. Now Rodney Sanders has a run on the inside of Gabe Hodges there. Down off the bottom, he has got it working, getting the grip on the bottom side of the track. And Rodney Sanders, car in front of the race leader, Aaron Benson. And Rodney Sanders, he's going to change his line. He's going to take the 20 machine upstairs. Benson trapped behind the lap car. Is this the move that's going to make the race? And Rodney Sanders to the race lead. Rodney working off of the top of turn two. He had to find something just to see if he could go out there, and this is as good as time as any to make it happen. We always talk about how hard it is to lead a race because you don't know what's coming behind you, and that was a prime example as Aaron Benson was running the bottom, and Rodney Sanders just moved to the top and zippity doo da right around him to the race lead. But Benson now changing his line. Going to go up above Denner as well as Sanders heads back down to the bottom side. 19 to go in this one, and Rodney Sanders has taken Jake Tim trying to work it around the top side, but Rodney Sanders has some dig on the bottom. Look at this, side by side in three or four, the rocket goes upstairs, and Jake Tim sneaks it around the top side. But here comes Chisholm on the bottom, a three-car battle for the race lead. Jim Chisholm blows it in, and oh, contact! Rodney Sanders around. Oh, my goodness. So listen to this. The caution was already coming out. You can see Cody down there picking up debris, throws it to the infield. Everybody's getting their spot back out as the caution was already called. Ah, uh, here we go. Green flag getting held high to the sky. Two to go for Jake Tim. Now Rodney Sanders knows he's got to move. If he's going to do it, he's got to do it now as he bangs off the cushion on the top side of one and two. He uses that as a little bit of a springboard and has a nice run into three and four, and here we come. The Hocha Town Saloon, white flag is out, the last call, and Sanders had it at the line that last time by. Look at that, he's got her wound up and whistling Dixie, he's not holding back. Through three and four, Rodney Sanders up to the top side. Jake Tim going to try the bottom, hammer it down off turn number four at the line. It's the Rocket. Rodney Sanders picking up the win by what? point one seven six at the line. Yeah, I honestly didn't even see him up there. I still thought it was Benson, but uh, you know, I knew uh, on that uh, restart when I went to go to the uh, in the three on the outside and he was there, and I thought kind of spooked me more than anything, but uh, you know, I got to really thank Jake. Uh, he raced me super clean. I know he could have, uh, you know, went up and took my line and, uh, you know, I, I really thought he was going to be able to get me off of four. There was so much traction down there, but uh, hats off to him. Uh, me and him can race together pretty well, so uh, I just got to thank him for running me clean. Man, you, uh, it, it looked like he was going to have the advantage and, and his line was a little better, but what, what happened there seemed like the higher you went, the faster you got. Yeah, I felt like I probably wasn't running high enough. Seemed like the more I got on the wall, the better it was. But, uh, you know, uh, we've kind of been throwing some stuff at it here lately and uh, took another big swing and definitely went in the right direction. But I feel like, uh, you know, we still need to be better. I had to kind of hunt for the moisture a little bit, but uh, it still feels good uh, to get a uh, win. I know uh, Jake and Jim, they've been uh, really fast. So uh, just to be able to run with them guys, it's, uh, you know, it's a pretty good accomplishment. Man, congratulations on it. You're certainly uh, certainly going to have the attention of everybody in the pits as you get that thing ready to race tomorrow. Yeah, it's uh, definitely a group effort. I mean, there's a lot of great people behind me that make this happen. Uh, Wichita Tank Racing, Army Contractors, uh, Keith Hammett, Trucking Construction, uh, Paulson Rock Products, um, the Sea Valley Transportation, MB Custom Race Cards, Hatfield Race Engines, uh, Dan with Sanitation Resources, uh, 
Tejas Environmental Solutions, uh, Crone Farm, Olson Custom Farms, uh, my wife, uh, Michael, Blake, my dad back home, they're all uh, big supporters, so I just got to thank all them guys. Uh, RVB Transport, the Smith Brothers, Smith Family, uh, Hibner Logging, uh, just Barnett Harley, just keeps going on. Swift Springs, Integra Shocks, CMD Shocks, the uh, long list of them all, but uh, I can't do it without all of them.